Knock, knock. Who is there? Batman. Batman who? Where's Rachel? That was a terrible joke. So bad. <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions, idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. You follow some Instagram, Twitter for juicy content. It's like some so people juicy. Bubbles, gonna they are wrapping filming on Batman in March. At least that's what Variety said. And that's been going on for years. Well, that he got film. COVID. No, I'm saying that film. Oh, I know. Has been going on for years. It's got, it's got picked up, delayed. I know. Canned. I know. Because uh, for, for a while when I worked at a bakery, I knew the costume designer. Uh, he was a costume designer from The Revenant. She was working on the Batman at that time. This Robert Pattinson one. Uh, no, at that time it was Ben Affleck. Oh, that's before he bef yeah, before, left. Before he left. Got it. And then they picked it up and now it's Robert Pattinson. And yeah. <laughs> and then Robert Pattinson got COVID. Yeah. So they had to close, sh close up shop, but they're going to wrap in March. And James Bond was pushed again to October. So we're not getting anything to yeah, it. We're getting nothing. Christmas. No. Which that's is depressing, it. but yeah. it's our life right now. Whatever. Anyways, today we're reacting to a video. Uh, it's a little long. It's about 20 minutes, but it's uh, What is Sikhism? Oh, great. Sikhism? I don't know if it's... Sikhism. I know that the religion is a, a Sikh. Why do you know that? Because they've told us. Uh, I've, heard, I've been told Sikh. No. Yeah. You're remembering it wrong. I've already, no, I just I've recently... I just I've recently watched, watched a video. video. <laughs> I just <laughs> recently watched a video. No, it's Sikh. Okay. Uh, it could be Sikhism, but I know the religion is a Sikh. Like when you go to Pittsburgh, if you are talking to someone from Pittsburgh, they call it Pittsburgh. Well, we brought this up like a week ago, and I was confirmed that I was correct. Regardless. By who? By who? A Punjabi? Yes. <laughs> Patreon. Yeah. Patreon Punjabis. The Patreon Punjabis. That's a great name for a cricket team. That is. The Patreon Punjabis. Yeah. Uh, Call them Pee Pee for short. Um, so we've reacted to, like, what is, what, uh, what is Hinduism? Remember that one? A while back. Hinduism? We did, didn't we do Jainism? I don't think so. I thought we did. Early, early on. Like, one of the first ones we did. Um, but this says, uh, now you can learn... Um, how the Singh and Singh Kaur names came to be? So, because every Punjabi has either a Singh or or a Kaur, Kaur, or I, I think some of the kind of some of the Bengalis, right? Right, G's, yeah. Chakraborty, Mukherjee. So, let's check this out. Oh, let me make sure my sound is on the right speaker because sometimes technology likes to have a mind of its own and kill us. Yep. Here we go. This <laughs> video is made possible thanks to Audible. Thank you, Audible. Audible.com slash Cogito. Audible, sponsor us. Cogito. I use 500 you. 500 to start your 30-day free trial. Do you like Audible? This sure. is the Harry Mandir, the world's been... largest free kitchen. I... It serves free vegetarian food to about 100,000 people every day. It's also the holiest site in Sikhism, the fifth largest Sikhism. and youngest of the world religions. I don't know that I trust his pronunciation. <laughs> ...and the equality of humankind, but also asks his followers to carry swords. So, who are the Sikhs? What do they believe, and why does everyone confuse them for Muslims? Not everyone well, does. Let's find out. Americans do. Ignorant people. Sikhism originated in the Punjab area of India and Pakistan. 500 years ago. The Punjab, the land of five rivers, is one of the most historically and culturally dense areas on earth. This was the home of one of the world's earliest civilizations, the Indus Valley Civilization. Hmm. Persians, Greeks, Central Asians, Mughals, the British, <laughs> the Mughals were all invaded here. I meant, I meant Mughals. Mo Mughal, Mughals invaded here. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Jainism, and a handful of other faiths have all left their mark on the region. The diverse culture of the Punjab has heavily influenced the Sikhs. Today, there are about 25 million Sikhs. They make up about 2% of India's population, but about 60% of the Punjabs. Yeah. The Sikh diaspora is spread out across the world, with concentrations in the UK, Canada, the US, East Africa, Australia, and Malaysia. Sikhs, interestingly enough, make up about 1.5% of Canada's population, which is second only to India. Wow. The word Sikh means learner, 
Sikh call their religion Sikhi, Gursikhi, and Gurmat. You can't really understand the Sikhs without understanding their relationship with gurus. The word guru means a teacher or spiritual guide. The guru teaches and the Sikh learns. The Sikhs follow the teachings of 10 succeeding gurus that have shaped Sikhism. The first and most important guru is Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. Born in 1469 CE near what is today Lahore, Pakistan. Nanak was seen as special even as a child. As a baby, he was said to have had the laugh of an adult man. Here comes the bird. <laughs> <laughs> As a teenager, he preferred to listen to Hindu saints and Sufi Muslim preachers rather than his own parents. As an adult, Nanak would face. settle in Sultanpur, where he worked for the government. The actions of his fellow government officials and the rich and powerful disgusted him as they Same. exploited eat the rich, eat eat people. And he hated the caste divisions that he saw all around him. One day, while bathing in a river near Sultanpur, Nanak had a miraculous experience. He was swept up into God's court where God spoke to him. Nanak reappeared three days later, declaring, There is no Hindu, I love the and there is no Muslim, too. there was only God. This was a message inspired by his experience with God, one that spoke in favor of the equality of humankind and against caste, ethnic, and religious divisions. Nanak would later say, Accept all humans as your equals and let them be your only sect. It's a great, like it. great adage to live Nine by. Nine human gurus followed Nanak, all preaching the same message of one God and the equality of humankind. Two fundamental events that shaped Sikh history was the martyrdom of two gurus. The first was the fifth guru, Guru Arjan, who was roasted alive by the Mughal Emperor Jahangir. The next martyr would be the ninth guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur. He was beheaded by the Mughals while attempting to defend the religious rights of Hindus. His son, Guru Gobind Rai, the tenth and final human guru, started a new Sikh community called the Khalsa and ended the line of human gurus by making the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh holy book, the last living guru. We'll take a closer look at both of these in a bit. So with that brief history out of the way, let's take a look at the core beliefs of Sikhism. 1. One God the Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib's opening sentence is just two words, Ik Ankar. There is only one God. Nanak made sure it was clear that the focus was on one. Ik doesn't just mean one, it is literally the numeral one. One God is by far the most important belief in Sikhism. This may not be the kind of God you're used to though. Sikhs believe in a formless, genderless, universal God beyond description. This God is all of reality and is within everything. They believe no idol or image could ever represent this being, so they use the sacred symbol of Ig Ankar to represent it instead. Many Sikhs refer to this one God by the name Wei Guru, Wondrous Lord. Guru Nanak and his followers constantly emphasized that this one could be understood in many different ways. No religion had a monopoly on the truth. Nanak's one could be known as Vishnu, Allah, the Tao, Yahweh, the Algorithm, or any other name or My belief. Name there was Jesus. no need to Yahweh. fight over whose God was the true God, as they were what? all the My same favorite name for one. Oh, Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> Recognize all mankind, whether Muslim or Hindu, as one. The same God is the creator and nourisher of all. Recognize no distinctions among them. The temple and the mosque are the same, so are Hindu worship and Muslim prayer. Human beings are all one. Guru Gobind Singh. The lack of a gender for this one God means that there is no difference between men and women in Sikhism. Sikhism was among oh, the first they? major world religions to make the radical suggestion that maybe, just maybe, women are people too. <laughs> Sikhism have fought battles, led religious services, and even acted as some of the, the longest reigning leaders Sikhism. of the entire community. Fight Sikhism for other is based rights, on doing right? things to get into heaven or hell. Hell is just life on earth, which your soul is constantly reborn into after you die, which is a uh, pretty dark. You see, Sikhs believe in reincarnation and karma, similar to Buddhists, Hindus, and Jains. But Sikhs believe that karma is modified by God, as in karma might decide what life you're born into, but God makes sure that anyone can become a good person in their lifetime if they try. The goal of Sikh life is to break free from the cycle of rebirth by merging your soul back into God's soul. One does this by realizing that you are already a part of God. You just need to let go of your ego. 
When your soul re-emerges back into God's, this is called Mukti, which is similar to Hinduism's Moksha and means liberation. When you re-emerge, your soul is released from the cycle of rebirth and death and becomes infinite, timeless and blissful. This is the closest thing six have to heaven. Two, Maya. Six believe that God is and created reality. But we forget this because humans are distracted by illusion or Maya, which is anything that takes your mind off God. Maya keeps people distracted. trapped in the cycle of rebirth and death. Guru Nanak thought that Maya built a wall between people and God. The wall of Maya is built with the five themes. Look, anger, greed, attachment, and pride. It is the duty of all six to avoid these thieves. The five thieves are caused by how my, literally I myself. How my makes people say, I am this, I am that, and it separates you from others, which blocks you from realizing your oneness with God. This ego causes people to live only for themselves, to spew negativity and to crave power and wealth. Yeah, Such well, a person great. is called Munmuk, facing towards desires. Guru Nanak saw the world's problems as the negative effects of ego. Hindu versus Muslim, Israeli versus Palestinian, sitting down wipers versus standing <laughs> All of these conflicts are caused by ego and Maya. The Guru Granth Sahib said it is not religion or race, but it is wealth that divides brothers. But Guru Nanak thought yeah, that there was an other direction people could face. By being a spiritual person, practicing compassion, truth, contentment, humility and love, and meditating on God, you could instead become Gurmukh facing towards the Guru. How does one become Gurmukh and egoless? Well, Sikhism offers a path to follow that can help, called the Three Pillars. Three. Three Pillars. The Three Pillars are 1. Nam Japo, which is meditation on God and the reciting and chanting of God's name, Way Guru. This is normally done in the morning and before bed. This isn't supposed to just be some mindless ritual either. Six are supposed to genuinely reflect on the qualities of God as they do this. Two, Kirat Karni, working hard and making an honest living. Guru Nanak said, only he who earns his living by the sweat of his brow and shares his earnings with others has discovered the path of righteousness. Three, one Chakna. This is sharing the fruits of your labor with others, providing <coughs> free food and donating to the community. The Sikh tradition of a communal meal or lunger at the Gurdwaras is a part of one chakna. The lunger or communal free kitchen inside of a Sikh Gurdwara, which is their equivalent of a mosque or church, is open to all who visit, regardless of caste, faith or gender. These serve vegetarian food to all, not because Sikhs have to be vegetarian, but simply because that means all people of all diets can partake. So if you want to taste typical Punjabi food, just go visit a Gurdwara. In Guru Nanak's time, the idea of different castes sitting together on the floor and eating side by side was a revolutionary act. Famously, the Mughal Emperor Akbar visited Guru Arjan and the Guru would not meet with him until he partook in a lunger, which the Emperor did, sitting side by side with peasants. Guru Nanak claimed an enlightened person are those who view everyone equally, like the heir touching the king and beggar alike. Another vital part of Sikhism that isn't one of the three pillars is Seva, which is selfless service. Through service to their community, Sikhs can become more humble and overcome their ego. Seva can include cleaning up right the Gurdwara, yeah, preparing did. food, Literally right cleaning there. dishes in the lunger, or it can include volunteering, building things for your community, or subscribing and ringing the notification bell. <laughs> This is a really good video. God's name, <laughs> honest work and sharing, along with selfless service and avoiding the five thieves, a person can rid themselves of egoism and be released from the cycle of rebirth mm. and death. 4. The Khalsa Guru Gobind Rai was the son of the ninth Guru, Teg Bahadur, who was beheaded by the Mughals and his body was abandoned by his Sikh entourage. They fled easily because no one could recognize them. So Guru Gobind decided to give Sikhs a distinct look from now on so that they would always be compelled to uphold Sikh values. So in 1699, Guru Gobind brought his Sikhs together at Anandapur. After their morning prayer, he stood in front of a huge crowd and demanded a human sacrifice. The shocked crowd was silent for a while before one Sikh rose up and entered the Guru's tent. The Guru followed him in and then the Guru comes out with blood on his sword. He demands another sacrifice. Another Sikh offers himself and enters the tent. Again, 
Only the guru comes back out of the tent, bloody sword in hand. Again, another sacrifice. And again, and finally, after the fifth sacrifice, the guru re-emerges with the five sticks, all wearing saffron colored robes. The guru declares that these are the Panj Pyaring, the five beloved ones. They would form the center of a new Sikh community called the Khalsa. He offered them Amrit, a bowl of sweet water. And all five who belong to different caste groups drank the Amrit from we the same bowl, which would have been a were huge the ones cleaning, deal back This signified no, they had joined a new casteless family, the Khalsa. Each of these volunteers had to leave behind their old surnames or caste names and adopt the same surname, Sin, which comes from the Sanskrit word Simba, meaning lion. I know, right? It has, it has no relation to the Bantu word Simba, which also means lion. It's just, it's just a weird coincidence, which is great. The Guru then begged the five beloved ones to let him join their Khalsa. They offered him the Amrit, and the Guru became Guru Gobind Singh. Women were admitted to the Khalsa the same way as men. After drinking the Amrit, they received the surname Kor, meaning princess. Uh. The Khalsa gave the Sikhs a new unified identity, tied together as one family with mm -hmm. one name, without caste, with the goal of defending the weak and promoting justice. Today, many Sikhs still undergo the Amrit ceremony and take the surnames Singh and Kor. The Khalsa were also given new rules to follow, which included the wearing of the Panj Kakar, or the five Ks. The first was Kes, which is uncut hair to represent discipline. The second was Karga, a small comb in the hair. The third was a Kirpan, a sword to uphold justice and protect the weak, which is nowadays usually a small sword. It is importantly not an offensive weapon and the Sikh Code of Conduct claims it can only be used to destroy tyrants and oppressors. It must not be used for anything else. The fourth is Kakahira, kind of loose-fitting boxer shorts to represent sexual restraint. And the fifth is Kara, a steel bracelet, its circular shape represents the infinity of God. Interestingly, the turban is not one of the five Ks. Instead, it's worn to cover the six long <laughs> uncut hair, the Kes. Turbans have become essential to Sikh identity and hold very special significance to them. Chances are, if you see someone wearing a turban, the vast majority of the time, that person will be a Sikh, not a Muslim. 5. The Guru Granth Sahib The Guru Granth Sahib is the holy book of the Sikhs. It contains the teachings of the Gurus and acts as a spiritual guide for Sikhs around the world. It is probably one of the only holy books that contains not only the writings of the religion's founders written by themselves rather than after their death, but also the writing of people from other religions. The writings of Muslims and Hindus can be found throughout, along with references to Judaism, Buddhism and Christianity. Before his death in 1708, the 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, ended the line of human human gurus by bestowing guruship on the Adi Granth, turning it into the Guru Granth Sahib, making it similar to both the Bible and Quran and the living prophet at the same time. To break down the name, the word guru means guru, uh, Granth means book, and Sahib means lord. Since that moment, the Guru Granth Sahib has been revered as the current living guru. It is treated with extreme respect and care. Oddly enough, the Granth is not only read, but sung. It's made up of thousands of hymns. Six don't have mass or service, but a kirtan, meaning communal singing. Normally, these are set to classical Indian music. Six, the Gurdwara. Six gather at Gurdwaras, a word meaning doorway to the Guru. A Gurdwara is only a Gurdwara because it has a copy of the Guru Granth Sahib in it. Men and women of all castes and social standing gather there to join in prayer, singing and eating. This is where you'll find the Lunger. Anyone can <laughs> visit a Gurdwara and partake in the service and meal. You only need to follow basic etiquette. Cover your head, remove your shoes, wash your hands as you enter, and do your best not to bring any drugs or tobacco inside. <laughs> the most important Gurdwara in the world is the Hari Mandir, or Golden Temple, in Amritsar, India. In 1604, Guru Arjan completed work on the Golden Temple and had the Guru Granth Sahib installed inside it. As a gesture of religious tolerance, Guru Arjan invited the Muslim, Mian Mir, to lay the foundation stone of the Golden Temple. The temple has four doors opening on all four sides to show the openness to all cultures and peoples. But on the inside, only one door leads to the inner sanctum, indicating that all paths and beliefs eventually lead to the one God. 
The Golden Temple is the most visited place in the world with around 6 million visitors each year. The Lunger at the Golden Temple serves a free meal to about 100,000 people each day, making it the world's largest free serving kitchen, all run and staffed by volunteers. And the waiting list to volunteer in the Golden Temple has hundreds of thousands of names on it. The people on that list will be waiting for a long time. A good way for them to pass the time productively will be to listen to audiobooks <laughs> all the time. While researching nice this video, I listened to Sikhism, a fairly short introduction by Eleanor Nesbitt, which is an excellent bite-sized introduction to Sikhism, stated in fairly clear language for people that are completely new to the topic. And if you want to go right to the source, Audible even has the complete 90 plus hour Guru Granth Sahib also available. Audible makes it easier than ever to fit audiobooks gotcha. into okay. your schedule. So I, think that's, uh, yeah, the rest I was, was double checking to make sure there was uh, nothing left in that one. Good video. Really informative and yeah. really entertaining. Yeah, one, uh, it's, it's great when you have a long video that you, you not only obviously give the good information that you need to, but kind of put in some humor. And the visuals uh, were great. Uh, it just kept me engaged and I learned a whole mm -hmm. lot of stuff I had not same previously known. Uh, and we went to the Golden Temple, which was one of our favorite day, even yeah. though we had only literally one day in Amritsar. But that is that is a standout yeah. memory that day. That place is insane. Like there's there's it has as many people as Disneyland, mm -hmm. but there's a there's a certain peace in the place. That's, Absolutely, that's undescribable unless you've been there. It's it's, yeah. it's really incredible. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I've definitely learned about six is their willingness to not only help people, and that's a, a core belief of theirs, and that's what I think should be a core belief of, I think, anybody, but especially mm -hmm. a religion, uh, is to help others. Um, but um, the fact that they also have gone to war with other religions, yeah. not, not in contention, but for to other religions them. to defend right. their, their rights to their religion or yes. uh, they've I think done it with I, I think both Muslims and Hindus and I don't know if they've done it with Christians as well but I'm sure they have um, but their whole thing I'm guessing is just to everybody's equal which is a great foundation to, to have because yeah. everyone is equal um, but it's it's kind of crazy that it was one of the first religions to actually incorporate that into their core beliefs yeah I, I would <laughs> like I would really love to talk to somebody either privately or in an interview, but I, I would love to see where um, they reconcile the differences between the world religions yeah. and, and see uh, what it is in their, in their writings that, that do that and how they do that. It's very intriguing. And it's, uh, they are, we talked about this when we were reviewing the uh, great Indian kitchen, mm -hmm. that what I found the only uh, unified belief system religion that I know of that hasn't had at one point or currently still has an ostracizing and a pushing away of women in menstruation mm -hmm. are them. Yeah. They don't consider that to be an unclean thing, that it is a sign of the life begetting power of a woman. Yeah. Uh, they just never cease to impress and yeah. be awesome. And they're <laughs> some of the best people you all yeah. meet. Really as great. Well. Um, so, yeah, very informative video. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. So let us know other videos like this uh, we should react to and if there's any information that, that was wrong or they missed, obviously feel free let to us know. let us know down below. <laughs> Look,